letting that breath flow so that it starts to move in and out through just the nose. And as you take that moment to come onto your space, maybe you set an intention or a dedication for your practice. And inhale, we're going to draw the right knee up and in, pulling it away from the rib cage towards the shoulder in your winder moving pose. So if you're already feeling froggy this morning, you might lift that left leg and just go ahead and get right into the core. As I tell you, take the knee across the body towards the left. Just reach out with that right arm. The gaze might stay overhead. The neck might already be warm enough. Look out over the right fingertips. And that next breath, we're coming back towards center, hugging that knee in, and you're just going to switch on over towards the left. So drawing the left towards the shoulder. Maybe you hover that right heel. And with your exhale, taking the body of the knee across the body towards the right. The left arm reaches out. Maybe the gaze goes long. And then from here, we're coming back to center, drawing both knees into the chest, taking a quick moment to rock side to side. And then you're taking both legs straight up. And from here, the arms come out into a T. You're going to flex the toes in towards your face. And as you exhale, the left leg slowly lowers. You're going to hover the heel for a breath and then take it back up. I'm going to do that on the right side as well. That leg starts to lower. Breath, switch. So we're going to move through five of those on each side. So lowering for two. Exhaling and using your breath, three, four, and five. And after your fifth one, the legs will be extended up overhead. <coughs> Just to really get that core going, and for good measure, we're going to do five leg lifts. So the arms now come overhead, interlacing the fingers, the pointer finger extended. And as you exhale, both heels lower. Inhale to lift. And we're going to do five of them. So again, working with your breath, you can go as fast or as slow as you want. Three, Four. And five. And after that fifth one, the knees are going to come into the chest, rocking, rolling. Anything you need to do is we make our way to tabletop. Five. And then once you find your tabletop, just starting to move through your cat and your cow and any other movement you need. Maybe you need hip circles. And then after you get some of that movement in, we're gonna go ahead and take the right leg straight out behind you. Starting to find that balance. And then you're going to bend that knee up and we're going to do five donkey kicks. So lift, lower, lift, and then bring it back to line with your spine. Three, four, and five. 
And with that fifth one, we're gonna hold the leg up. You're gonna really engage the core, start transferring a lot of the weight into your right wrist. And reach back with the left hand to see if you can't find those right toes. Nice. And from your lion's pose, we're gonna release this right leg behind you. The arm starts to open and you find a side plank. We're just kind of rolling out of our twist. And since we're already warming up the core, we might as well lift that back right leg as well. And that fifth breath, you're going to take your right arm reaching forward so the, long, the side of the body is a long line. We've got five oblique crunches. So elbow meets knee. Coming long. Two. Three. Four. And five. After that fifth one, we're going to come back down towards center. Shake it all out. Move through whatever you need to because you know we've got to get to the left side. And then as you're ready, that left leg comes out. You're just gonna find your line first, find that balance, and then the knee bends. And you've got your five donkey kicks. So lift, line, lift, two, three, four, and on that fifth one, we're gonna hold it up there and start seeing if we can't reach around and grab the left toes with the right hand. Awesome. And with that fifth breath, the right hand comes to the mat. We start to open out into that side plank. And you're going to bring the arm forward and you've got your oblique crunches. So five of them. Elbow to knee. Two. Three. Four. And five. After that fifth one, we're going to find our line. Make our way back to your tabletop. Kind of wiggle out whatever you need to. You're going to go ahead and plug the toes into the mat. The knees hover about two or three inches off of your mat and your hover tabletop. <coughs> and then you're going to take it back into your down dog. And then from here, taking whatever time that you need to pedal the heels out, find some weight through the back of the legs. And then as you're ready, we're going to take that right leg up, grab some circles, back the hip, just open it a little. And when you're ready, we're going to take the knee to the back of the right elbow. Nice. We're going to take it up. Back of the left elbow. Take it up. Set it back down. We're going to do that again on the left. So the left leg lifts, finding whatever movement you want to here to open that joint. And the next breath, you're going to take the left knee to the left elbow. Nice. We're going to take it back up. We're going to go right. Nice, back up, and then you're gonna let it set down. Pedal the heels out, do whatever you need to do. And your next couple of breaths, we're gonna start to make our way up towards the hands. So maybe you walk, maybe you're already ready to hop. Then from here, just finding your rag doll or forward fold of choice. So maybe the head hangs heavy. Maybe you're ready to go ahead and bind on the toes. Maybe you want to take the arms overhead. And 
with that next breath, we're going to make our way towards standing, starting to meet in mountain pose or Tadasana. So toes together, heels slightly apart. And from here, as you inhale, arms come up overhead. Exhale, starting to fold towards your mat. Inhaling to halfway lift. Exhaling as you plant the hands and step back to your plank. Really pulling back through the heels, starting to engage the core. We're going to hold it for a couple breaths. And with that exhale, starting to move through your vinyasa, so chaturanga, up dog cobra, back into your down dog. And maybe you're still finding movement here. Maybe you're still, whatever's working for you. Ooh, I got pollen in my hair. And when you're ready, we're taking it back to the top of your mat in your favorite method. Inhaling into your flat back, exhaling back down into your fold. As you inhale, arms are coming up, exhaling, hands come in. We're going to move through two more traditional A's before we start to flow. So arms rise, exhale to fold, inhale, halfway lift, exhale, moving through your favorite form of vinyasa. So maybe you want to throw in extra push ups. Maybe you want to spend an extra breath or two in your up dog. You know that we've always got those five breaths in between. We've always got time to catch back up. And with that next breath, making your trip to the top of your space. Starting to find your flat back. Nice, nice little hops. Exhaling into your fold. Inhaling, the arms come back up. Exhale, hands come in. And third one, so the arms rise. Taking it back towards your mat. Inhaling into your flat back. And then moving to your vinyasa. So once again, maybe it's traditional and maybe it's your own remix. And then that next breath, we're going to make our way towards the top of the mat, whatever your chosen method is. Nice. Once you get there, you're going to find your flat back. Exhale into your fold. Inhale, arms come back up overhead. Exhale, hands come into heart center. From here, you're going to bend those knees, start to sit deep in a chair. In that next breath, we're taking this left elbow to the outside of your right knee, checking in with those knees. We're in, we haven't done a lot of twists, so it's probably not going to be your deepest twist today, but just a nice opener. Coming back towards center, we're going to get that other side, so right to left. Going back towards center. We're going to start to fold, inhaling into your flat back, and then moving through vinyasa. And we'll meet with that right leg lifted. Nice. So that right knee is going to tap the right elbow. Drop it down to the right wrist. Come back up. Same thing on the left. Once you tap the elbow, drop to wrist. Take it back up. Then we're going to step through the hands and find a warrior two. So that back heel drops in. Arms come up and open. And then from here, you're going to drop back into your reverse.
And then from your reverse, we're gonna keep that half bind starting to come wide. You're gonna see if you can't plant the inside of the right foot into a half, into a half bound side angle. Nice. And then from that side angle, we're just gonna make our way back up into your warrior two. You're gonna straighten the front knee. I like to hop the back foot forward just a little bit as you pull forward through the fingertips, finding your triangle. I just personally prefer a slightly narrower triangle. And from that triangle, we're just going to switch it into a revolve. So this left hand is going to find the mat inside or outside that front foot. You're going to think about squaring your hips to get your balance, and then you can start to twist into your opening. Nice. And just because we can, we're gonna bend the front knee a little bit. You're gonna take this left hand a little bit in front of and diagonal to that right foot. And you're gonna go ahead and hop up into your half, your revolved half moon. Nice. And from that revolved half moon, we're gonna see if we can't step back into our warrior twos. Whoa. <laughs> and whenever you feel good in that warrior two, we're gonna move through a vinyasa to make our way to the left. And when you find the, when you're ready to go on the left, we'll lift those left legs. Nice. And you know we've got those those elbow taps. So left knee, left elbow. You're gonna drop down to the wrist. We're gonna come back up. We're gonna go to the right. Drop to the wrist. Come up. And then step through into your warrior two. As you exhale, you're finding your reverse. And so we're gonna, from our reverse, we're gonna go ahead and create that half bind. So you're gonna let the arm line the back. You're gonna pull through those fingertips and see if you can't land the hand to the inside of the foot and open out so you found a bound side angle. Nice. And from that side angle, we're gonna come back up, come wide, straighten the knee. Again, if you like a wide triangle, triangle, feel free to take it. I like a more narrow one, so you might hop that back foot forward. Get a pull through the fingertips and hinge on over. So we're going to switch it to your revolve. So this right hand is coming to the inside of the outside of the left foot. I like to take that moment to square my hips so I know I've got good balance before I start to twist open from there. Into your revolved triangle. And from our revolved triangle, we're moving into your revolved half moon. So this right hand's coming forward and diagonal to the foot. You're gonna start to hop up into the left leg and just find that balance. Nice. Then your fifth breath, we're gonna see if we can land in a warrior two. Nice. 
unless you've caught a couple of breaths here, we're gonna flow on through. So making your way back through a vinyasa. Maybe you grab some water once you're done with it. Maybe you just need to chill here for a five breath. We're gonna build on that flow just a little bit. I got gravel all over my mat. We gotta get off of here. And then whenever you're ready, we'll all link back up and down dog. Cool. And so from down dog, you're just making your way to the hands. Inhaling into your flat back. Exhaling into your fold. As you inhale, arms come up overhead. As you exhale, hands come into heart center. You're sitting back in your chair again. We're going directly into that twist. So the left elbow coming to the outside of the right knee. If you want to check out your balance here, you might try to lift that left foot. Nice. Whenever you're ready, we'll set that foot down. We'll come to center. Take it to the left. When you find your twist, if you feel like playing, you might lift the right foot this time. Ridge, release that and come all the way out into your forward fold. Inhaling flat back, we're going to move through our vinyasa to get to the right side. The right side lift. We're gonna let it step in between the hands. The back heel's gonna pivot in, and first we're just gonna come up into a warrior one. And from your warrior one, we're opening out warrior two. Dropping back into your reverse. We're going to take our reverse with that half spine. And then you're just going to pull forward, hinging on over into your side angle. So you've already got that half spine here. You might stay here. You might start to reach the right hand up and under and just find a full bind. If you have a bit of paradise, you might start to hop on forward. And then whenever you're ready, we'll all link up again in some variation of side angle. Doesn't really matter what it looks like because we know that we're just using it to get our way back up to warrior two. We're gonna straighten that front knee. Again, optional hop the foot forward, coming down into your triangle. So you can also bind in triangle, the exact same bind that we just did in side angle. So you start to rotate the top hand, letting the palm come towards the sacrum and the front arm reaches up and under. <laughs> back and up. Nice. Whenever we're done playing in our triangles, we're going to revolve it. So starting to release the left hand to the mat, inside or outside of the right foot, whatever's more comfortable for you. And then the right arm starts to lift. From here, we're keeping that hand right where it is. You're hopping this left hand. The right hand stays up, left hand hops forward and diagonal. We're finding your revolved half moon. Now, if you want to play with where we were in our opener, you might bend that back knee. 
and reach for the foot. We played with it in our lie, our tiger. Your chapasana. After you've played with your balance a little, nice. You'll step back down. Find your warrior two. We're gonna let hands clasp behind the back. Inhale for a little leap and then fold into a humble warrior. From your humble warrior, we'll stay folded. We'll release both hands to the mat so they're framing the foot. You're gonna pivot up onto the back toes so you're in a nice low runner's lunge. You're gonna drop that back knee, let the toes come long, and then you can start to lean forward through this right knee. And it's gonna create a pretty intense hip opener through the front of the left hip. And then you're just gonna kick back into your half split for your half Hanuman. And then from here, we're rocking back forward, letting the hands replant, tucking the toe, and making your way back to your down dog. Maybe you take a quick second to pedal it out. We're gonna take that left leg up. Step in between the hands to find your warrior one. You're opening out into your warrior twos. You're going to drop back into your reverse. Maybe you take your reverse to the half bind already. Coming on over into your side angle. You might stay with your half bind. You might play with reaching the left hand under, finding that full bind. You've got several breaths here, so if you like to play with Bird of Paradise, knowing that you've got time for that too. And then those next couple breaths, we'll all just link up in warrior two. Straightening the front knee, adjusting the feet, however it works for you. Pulling through the fingertips to fall into your triangle. Maybe you play with your bind in your triangle. One side typically is a little easier than the other. And from triangle, we're releasing whatever craziness we got into there to move into your revolved triangle. So we're just taking the right hand down, left arm up. And from that, we're moving towards that revolved half moon. So this right foot hand steps forward, you pop up. And if you wanna see about grabbing the right foot with the left hand, knowing you've got time to play here too. And after you've got your five breaths in, we'll come back up into your warrior two. Your class Hands behind the back. Inhale to find some length. Folding into your humble warrior.
From here, we're letting the hands come to the mat to move into that low runner's lunge. The back knee drops. You're going to pull forward through the left knee. And that next breath, you're pushing back into your half foot. We're going to come back forward, the hands plant near the feet, and we're going to step back to our down dog. From our down dogs, we're going to do three of Catherine's oh shit. We're going to come down onto the forearms, press back up. Actually, let's just do five. We might as well. Forearms up, three, four. And five. After that fifth one, you're going to press out through the toes, roll into your plank, and move through your vinyasa. After this vinyasa, you're going to take it back to a quick child's pose. Oh no. Where'd you go? So in your child's pose, you are starting to thread the needle. So the right arm's coming up, it's threading underneath the left. We're going to take the left arm up, letting the sacrum sit, the back of the palm sit on the sacrum. Or you might find that you're able to reach around and grab the right thigh. From there, we're coming back forward and we're going to get that other side. So the left arm lifts, threads beneath the right. And then you're taking the right arm up, letting it rotate, seeing if you can't set the back of the palm on the sacrum or even clasp on the left thigh. From here, we're coming back forward. We're going to come all the way up onto the knees, and up the toes. I'm a whole lot of time really like going into back bends. We didn't play in any crescent or anything today. If your back is super open, the toes might come long or moving into your camels. The hands are coming to the backs of the hips with the fingertips pointed down like you're going to put them into some pockets and some jeans. The shoulders roll open. You start to press the hips forward. This is going to cause you to roll back. Head drops back last. If you like to grab the heels, feel free to. And once you get heels, you're just making a mental note to pull the hips forward. They might not move. And you're here for deep breath. And after your next breath, we're coming down into a tabletop, moving through the cat cow. Doing whatever you need to here, maybe some hip circles, maybe some neck circles. And we're going to plug the toes in one more time. Hover the knees about three inches off of your mat. And then taking it back to your down dog. So from here, we're taking the right leg up one more time. We're going to let it step in between the hands. We're keeping the back heel lifted as you take it up into a crescent. And 
And in that fifth breath, we're gonna do five like crescent lunges. So as you exhale, the knee and the arms come down, inhaling back up, two, three, four, and five. After that fifth one, we're gonna spin into a warrior two. From here, straighten the front knee, toes pivot towards you, inhale for some reach, exhale into your favorite variation of wide leg forward fold. And we'll stay here for about eight to 10 breaths for anybody who likes to play in crow or tripod headstand. Feel free to grab those arm balances and or inversions now. Nice. In those next couple of breaths, we'll start to make our way back towards standing. When you get to standing, we're going to switch our feet, kind of. So really, you're just switching it from slightly pigeon-toed in to heels in, toes out, like squat feet, balasana. And from here, we are going to find that goddess pose. Pretty sure here we're channeling a Jin or a Catherine again, but you're going to tap the right elbow to the right knee, up, over, left. Two, two, three, three, four, four, last one, five, Five. Coming back towards center, we're going to bring the hands in together. You might heel toe the feet in a little bit more as we make our way all the way down into a deep malasana. And so from here, we're just going to kind of go ahead and twist over the right knee. So both hands are coming forward, but we are going to enjoy that twist in the side body for just a breath or two before we start to make our way back to a plank. And we're going to get our left side too. And from your plank, you might as well hold this one for good measure. <laughs> And you're going to lower through, puffers of grease, coming up into your up dog or cobra, taking it to your down dog. And then the left leg comes up. And we're going to find that crescent lunge on the left. And you've got your five lunges here. So one, two, three, four, and five. After the fifth one, we're going to take it to warrior two. And then we're coming back into another wide-legged. Again, you've got five to 10 breaths here. So take whatever it is you need. Maybe it's playtime. Maybe it's a really long stretch. Maybe you need multiple things. And so from here, we're making our way back towards standing. We've got to flip the feet again as we come back down into that goddess. Last five of those little oblique things. So you're going to tap one elbow to the knee. I'm off and get the other one. Two. Three. Four. Five. And 
after that fifth one, we're going to pop all the way up into a five-pointed star. Heel toe the feet in together just a little bit and make your way down into your full malak. Nice. So we should be, oh, perfect, we are. The left, your left foot be at the top of your mat so you can grab that little twist again here. Taking both hands to the outside of that foot. Except this time, what we're going to do is we're going to really plant in that left hand. Step the feet back and open out to your side plank. Now that we've got those five breaths, we're going to cycle on through to the other side. Just kind of come through center and then open to the other side. Nice, we're going back towards center, moving through your chaturanga, up into your up dog or cobra. You're going to take it back to the child's pose. And then from child's pose, we're going to meet with legs extended out front. And then as you inhale, arms come up overhead. Inhale, hands, nope, hands, well, yeah, hands, head, it all folds, whatever. We're going towards the toes. Inhaling, we're coming back up. Does anybody have on a watch? I can't see what time it is because I'm on just my phone today. So I'm going to figure out how much core we have. 10.43. Sweet. Cool. We actually might not have a whole lot more core. Perfect. So we're going to take this right leg forward. The left leg's coming back. So the you might have to roll your calf out of the way, but you've got the knee bent backwards. You're in a half hero's pose. So... I personally hate this posture because um, one of my, my sitting bone on the bent knee side always wants to come up. Apparently, the solution for that is to really fan out the toes on the left foot and press the top of the foot into the mat as you fold. As soon as that left sitting bone wants to hop off the mat, that is where your fold stops. But it's gonna help open the knee. From here, we're going to come back up. We're going to set this left foot on the mat. Coming out, the right leg is still out long. We're going to get to the other side in just a second. So from here, you're going to bring the left arm to the inside of your left knee. You're going to start to, as you inhale, you're going to start reaching forward and up. Wait, no, hold on. I've got yours backwards. Just kidding. The knee, this knee needs to rotate down and come into half lotus first. We're going to do the other bind later. So this one's going to help open our arms to get ready for that bigger bind. So then from here, as you inhale, you're coming up. You're starting to rotate as you twist around. If you have a strap, you might grab your strap and hook it around your toes. You might be able to grab your toes here. Wherever you have chosen, you might, wherever you've chosen to stop, you might stop. If you have the toes or a strap and you feel good, you're going to start to fold. Wait, what? <laughs> Let me see. Confused. Okay. So you've got, yeah. we've got our right leg out. The left leg is in half lotus. Okay, okay, okay. So from here, you can, there are a couple cheat codes. I'm gonna pretend like this stick is a strap and be behind you guys for a second. Okay, so I've got my hand and got my half lotus. I can bring this here. So if I have a strap, I can hold on to that strap and the foot. And that's gonna help me start to get the bind here. 
If I don't need a strap, am I either, I might even just stay here if I don't have a strap, or grab that foot. You can always stay or fold. What just happened? Oh, you're frozen. Huh? Your screen is frozen. Yeah. Okay. Oh, All right, back. there you are. You're back. So, it is. Ow, these gravels are starting to hurt my bum. I gotta move this mat. <laughs> okay. So, if you take this left foot into half lotus, You've got that here. We'll go ahead and grab the ground this right hand because it's just a good stabilizing point. And if nobody's got a strap or anything available for a strap, your arm can still be a prop. So this left arm is coming up. You start to rotate the palm as you turn. So the back of the, just like we do in our side angles. So the back of the arm is lining the back. You might grab this right arm. You might be able to find that you can even reach farther than the arm and grab these toes. Wherever you... Nice. And if you have either the arm or the toes, you can then start to fold. So it's going to open this shoulder, the left shoulder, elbow, hips and knees, and a little bit of ankle. So from here, we're going to come back up. We've got one last one on this side. So what you're doing here is we're grounding the left foot. We're going to have our right hand as a kickstand again, just in case. And you're going to end up binding around this knee. So as you inhale, the left arm comes up. I exhale as I start to fold. If I can get my lungs out of the way, I've got a deeper bind. And then as always, we're going to rotate that arm, sorry to come around the knee. You might just be stopping here. You might be able to grab and fold. I see. And then whenever you guys are ready, we're gonna release that Marichi Asana. Just let the left knee roll open. Inhale up, exhale to fold. Coming back up and we're just gonna see if we can't play around doing that weird stuff on the opposite side. So the left leg comes forward. All of these postures are taken from the Ashtanga primary series. We're going to take the right knee back if you need to roll half out of the way. Getting that flesh out of your way. Spreading those back toes, really pressing through the top of the foot and then folding. And again, wherever your sitting bone comes off the mat, that's where you're going to stop. Into that half hero, the big knee opener. From here, we're coming back up and we're going to first go into, I forget what that other one is called, but we're going to take the right foot into half lotus. Right. The left hand grounds for stabilization and as you inhale, right arm comes up. You're going to start to rotate it as you draw it behind the body. You might grab the left arm. You might find that you're able to grab all the way forward on those right toes. Inhale for your length and then exhale into your fold. Nice. And we're going to make our way back up. Man, this is one of those postures that I really miss being able to make adjustments. Because there's always like that one person, their hands are like only that far apart, and they're like, I know you have it. You just have too much air in your lungs. 
So we're gonna set this right foot on the ground. The left leg's still out. Your left arm can stabilize you as normal. As you inhale, we're bringing the right arm in the middle, starting to pull forward to lengthen. The arm starts to rotate as you wrap around the knee, starting to grab the back, wrap towards the back. Left hand may be able to come up and bind behind you into your Marichi Asana. I think this one is A. <coughs> After our fifth breath, we're coming up, letting the right knee fall open, inhaling for your length, exhaling into your Janu A. And we're gonna come back up. We're gonna do Marichi C and then start moving towards back bends and inversions. So Marichi C, we're gonna switch those legs again. So the left leg's coming out. Right leg comes out, left leg ground. And it's a, it is a twist. There's a couple different places that you can stop in your bind. So from here, the left hand grounds next to that left knee. As you inhale, the right arm comes up. Exhaling, you're gonna hook it on the outside of that left knee. That's kind of where it's just very normal for our twist. For here, there's a couple different bind options you have, which is what gets you into the Mariasha C. So you might, if you are still tight and trying to open, you're just gonna unbend the elbow, see if you can't reach towards the toes on the left foot. If you feel good there, you're gonna to start to try to rotate the elbow around the outside of the knee and then bind behind you. There are some disciplines that bind through this little hole right here. It's really difficult on your elbows. So unless you've got like super duper awesome elbows, I kind of try to stay away from that one personally. I've broken all my elbows before, so I'm not trying to go back down that path. After your Marichi C on that side, we're going to let the knee drop open. The right foot's going to come meet it. We're going to grab a Baddha Konasana in between sides, <coughs> finding your butterfly. coming up and we're gonna get that other side. So the right knee is gonna come up and plant, left leg comes long, right hand grounds next to that grounded foot or I like to ground it behind my hip. Inhaling the left arm up for length, exhaling as you hook it to the outside of that left knee. And then you might start to grab, go for grabbing the right toes. You might start going for the bind around the knee. Coming back towards center, we're going to find one more butterfly just because that's kind of a nice way to release. And then from here, we're gonna make our way up and start coming onto the back. So we're gonna do, we already did a camel. We're gonna do one more back bend, whatever you choice. Maybe you want another camel, maybe you want a wheel, maybe you're more feeling a bridge, but we're gonna go for eight breaths and we're gonna try to make them eight long controlled breaths instead of eight fast breaths since we're only doing them. If you are going into bridge or wheel, Heels are close to your sitting bones, aligned with them. For bridges, arms are down by your side, pressed into the mat. For the wheel, palms are up near the ear, the fingers pointed back towards the shoulders. Inhaling at the bottom, exhaling as you lift, and then just counting with your breath to eight.
after you've got your eighth breath, moving through your counter pose of choice. So maybe it's windshield wiper knees. Maybe you've got knees to the chest. Maybe you're a happy baby. And then from our back bends, you're moving into inversion. So you might take those legs straight up. You might throw a block underneath your sacrum. You might have a cool little inversion chair that you can use. Maybe your shoulder standing. And you've got plenty of time to play here. You want to get the feet above the heart for at least 10 breaths. Nice. Nice. And then whenever you are done playing in your inversions, we'll start making our way towards the back, starting to move through a couple closing postures towards our Shavasana. I really want to get one of those little headstand chairs now. Yeah. I don't know what they're called. I know it's not called a headstand chair though. It's an inversion. Yeah. Is that what it is, a chair? All right, so from once we make our way to the back, we're just going to pour the right foot at the left knee, starting to draw those hips, trying to draw the knees up. Maybe you clasp behind the left thigh, maybe you extend the left foot, whatever feels best in your hips today. And then with that next breath, we're going to let both knees drop over towards the left. This right knee might stay up. You might roll it in the body. And then from here, we're coming back towards center. We're going to switch it to the right foot ground. Left foot figure four, drawing up and in. Maybe you clasp behind the thigh. Maybe you extend. And in that fifth breath, we're going to drop towards the right. And then we're coming back towards center. From here, we're going to draw both knees into the chest. Just take a quick moment to rock side to side. And that next breath, you're going to let the left leg come long and the right foot extend towards the ceiling. Maybe you brace behind the knee. Maybe you're making your way up towards the ankle to the toes. Flexing the left toes is going to make you feel more grounded through that long side body. In your fifth breath, we're going to drop the leg open towards the right. <clears throat> and 
coming up. If you stop the toe, which I know most of you do, you're not going to switch the grip as you take it towards the left. Maybe the right arm open. And we're finally, we're bringing it back up. You're gonna bend the knee and pull it towards the shoulder away from the rib cage. Revisiting that wind removing pose. Noticing subtle differences from when we were here at the beginning of practice. And then when you're ready, we're gonna let the right leg come out long, left leg lift, finding where you wanna find. And as you're ready, drop open towards the left. Taking it up overhead. And across the body towards the right. Not bring the switch the grip if you need to along the way. And from here, we're coming back up. You're going to bend the knee, pull it towards the shoulder, away from the rib cage. And then round out our practice, we're going to let both feet start to come down and plant on the mat. Arms come out to a T, and both set the knees drop over towards the right. Gaze goes left in your supine twist. And then inhale, coming up to center. Exhale on over towards the left. With your fifth breath, knees are coming towards center. Starting to hug both knees into the chest, rocking around like a little ball. Maybe you want a moment of compression. Maybe there's some additional movement that you need to find. But as you're ready, we're going to start finding our shavasana. And as you find your shavasana, allowing the breath to start to turn to whatever normal pace that it wants. Maybe you call your intention one last time. So just giving yourself a few moments to absorb your practice.
And with those next couple breaths, we'll start letting <laughs> the small movements return towards the body. Starting in fingers and toes. Maybe they were far as brushing a dog off you. <laughs> I look up and Marsha's just getting licked in the face. <laughs> We're gonna start making our way back to seated. Yeah, Cynthia looks like she's getting attacked in her shavasana too. And then once we've all made our way back towards seated, we're gonna inhale, arms up overhead. Exhale, hands are coming into heart center. Thank you guys all for coming and playing, for rearranging your living room. <laughs> bearing with pets, bearing with, I forgot my laptop, so I know that we're never hosting another one of these again on my phone. <laughs> we'll always have the laptop. So thank you guys for your patience and your practice. I hope you guys have an awesome Wednesday. Namaste.